song called Another in the Fire, and one of the, the parts of that song was that there's another in the fire, basically, you know, standing next to me, and, and it's from this scripture that we take that phrase. So let, let's put this in context. Daniel chapter 3, I'm going to read from 1 to 30, then we're going to come back and break it down. So stay with me. We're going to read all the way through this. So King Nebuchadnezzar, who at the time was the king of Babylon, of, of, of Babylon okay, he made an image of gold, 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide, and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the advisors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, basically all the important people, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So all those important people, right, assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Verse 4, then the herald loudly proclaimed, nations and peoples of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the scissor, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all the kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into the blazing furnace. So if we stop for a second, you start seeing that already there's a, there's a problem being set up, right? There, there's something coming down the pipe that's being set up. You've got King Nebuchadnezzar, who's the king of Babylon at the time, the king of the time of, of Persia, and, and he builds up an image, and he's declaring it a god that they're supposed to worship. So if you know anything about scripture, you know we shall have no gods before the one true God. So we already know where this is going, okay? Verse 7. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, the flute, the scissor, the lyre, the harp, and all kinds of music, all the nations and peoples of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. You'll see here in a second that there was a group of Jews that didn't bow down. They said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the scither, the, scither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music, they must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, specifically Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. So furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? He's asking them a question. Notice they hadn't yet given him an answer. But notice what King Nebuchadnezzar does. He gives them a chance. He, 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 he doesn't give them a chance to answer. He gives them a chance to do again what he asked them to do. Verse 15, now, he tells them, when you hear the sound, because it couldn't have been true, right? Couldn't have been true. So now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the scissor, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace, and then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? See, that's a question you should never ask a true man or woman of God. Because when you try God, God will respond. And I love that setup there because then Nebuchadnezzar in verse 19, I'm sorry, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, very respectfully, King Nebuchadnezzar, we, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace... The God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, 
We want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Do you guys see the tribulation that they've just found themselves in? Oh, they were very confident in the position that they were taking, but they were facing certain death because they had already declared that they were not going to bow down to the golden image. They were not going to bow down to a false god. They were going to take a stance for the one true living God. And they said, whatever happens, happens, but we're not going that route. I'm going to break that down in a second. Verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. And then the king Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that were tied up and thrown into the fire? And they replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Say with me, there was another in the fire. Now, now say it like you, you heard me ask you to say it. There was another in the fire. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they came out of the fire, and the satraps, perfects, all the important people, whatever, crowded around them. They saw them, they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to God, to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angels and rescued his servants. They trusted him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into the pile of rubble. For no other God can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. There is so much to take from this trial. But if you just put yourselves for a second in the position of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how would you have acted in the face of certain death? How would you have responded in the face of certain tribulation? I wish I would be able to stand here today and say all of us would have passed. All of us would have just been like, just like these, no way, I ain't going out like that. My God is my God and I don't care what you say. I wish we would all say that. But if we're going to be honest and if we're going to be real, many of us would have bowed down to that golden image. And it's a scary thought. It goes back to a couple lessons ago where we were talking about the fear of God, that we've lost the fear of God. We need to learn to regain the fear of God. We need to learn to regain the seriousness of what God has said. And when we understand who God is in the face of tribulation, then we can give thanks. So there's a principle called the sovereignty of God that I need us to understand. How many of you guys have ever heard the word sovereignty of God or that, that theme, sovereignty of God? We have to understand that God is a sovereign God. What does the word sovereign mean? The word sovereign means the utmost authority, the supreme power. You see, there, there was authority in King Nebuchadnezzar. But the final word, the supreme authority, was in God. Do you understand the difference? And if you're going to listen to an authority, you have to learn to listen to the supreme authority. Was there authority in the king? Yes. 
But the supreme authority was in God because he's a sovereign God. This might get me in trouble on social media, but is there authority in the U.S. government? Yes. But where is the supreme authority? It's in God. When you are faced between what does the government tell me to do and what is God trying to tell me to do, there is but one answer to listen to. There is a supreme power. There is a supreme authority. The government might mess you up while you're living here in the States, but God can mess you up for eternity, you know what I'm saying? The problem is we don't have a real understanding about the sovereignty of God. Are you hearing me?